Let's go ahead and sit down, everybody. Let's get the ops track going again. That's what I figured. I'm mostly talking for the camera, I think. Check, check. All right, that's a lot better. All right, here's Alan. He's going to talk to us about, I've, I'll be honest, I've been looking forward to this for a bit. I'm going to go see if I can find Justin, because I know he has also been looking forward to this for a bit. Um, otherwise, let's get rolling. Thank you, Ryan. Can you guys hear me? Okay, thank you, and thank you, Ryan. Um, welcome, everybody. My name is Alan Zarnicki. I'm with Nationwide Insurance. The talk I'm going to give you, um, I did just a couple months ago at FSISAC. I am going to push through it fast. So if you have questions, stop me and ask questions, and uh, we'll go from there. Come, come and talk to me uh, later if you do have further questions that we can't get to now, and we'll talk about it later. So um, MISP, is, there's a lot of talk about MISP, and Borland is doing some fantastic work, and, and all those, that, the, the gentleman that was with him, um, it's incredible, and I want to talk to him about what he's doing with MISP. What we're doing with MISP is it's, it, it's used, it can be used in a whole bunch of disparate ways, and I'm going to talk about how we, um, we create a universe of known bad with MISP, and th that's how it's typically, uh, was it by design, expected to be used. But what we do with it differently is we put our observed outbound web traffic indicators into there. There's a process, and then we do correlations with that. And then we, uh, w with those correlations, we visualize with D3, and, and, and the output of what, what can show up in these graphs can be three different things. It can be true positives, can be false positives, and it can be anomalies. And uh, I'm being allowed to do this because we, it, it turns out this is a really interesting way to do things. So let's get going. Um, to, uh, Parisa Tabriz had a great quote. Um, uh, you know, hunting and searching by discrete indicators is not the future. It's not the, it's not the way to go. I, I want to look at everything that goes through my outbound web gateways. I want to correlate it with my whole entire universe of known bad. That's the essence of what I want to do here. All right, MISP itself has the concept of events and attributes. It's a very powerful concept. A lot of te threat intel providers um, have uh, a whole bunch of different enclave types of uh, uh, paradigms that they use that I have a lot of trouble with, to be very honest. But the uh, event attribute paradigm is very powerful. And the essence of what MISP is is you have events that have attributes, and you do correlations between those, right? Very straightforward. So take that and scale it up a little bit. On the left-hand side of this is the typical usage for uh, MISP, where you have indicators, open source indicators, uh, financial services, information sharing is an intake and input into our MISP. This is a funnel concept I'm trying to show here. We have Roadhouse Miscreant Punchers, an incredible group of people that, that regularly supply incredible amounts of uh, valuable information. It, it comes into our, right on, Roadhouse. Ryan Moon, one of the founders, you talk to that guy. He is, uh, he's, he and Nathan and, and the rest of the former Zions crew are just really legends in the business right now. We can't thank them enough. Let's keep moving. All right. So uh, Roadhouse, incredible. Open source intel is what this is. Use MISP. Learn how to use mail to MISP if you want to participate this participate in this. Anything that comes into my email inbox, I just forward into my MISP. It, it parses, it runs regexes, it extracts the IPs and domains of interest as well as the hashes, and there it is. I've got my indicators. 
Okay, so on the right hand side is what I'm doing and we are doing unique with MISP. We take, I, I'm going to show you kind of in a little bit more detail here in a second, how I extract. We have, um, we're, we have two outbound web gateway systems. We're, we're transitioning from one to the other right now. I have about 60 or 70 appliances uh, th through our inf data centers as well as our clouds um, providers that I extract. I, I pull the logs, I extract IPs and domains out of these devices. And what I do is I, I, I unique them, I sort them, I run them through whitelists, and out of that, out of the millions and millions of domains and IPs that uh, uh, all of Nationwide Associates hit on a given day, it boils down to around 75,000 unique indi indicators per day. And so what we're going to do, the essence of what I'm doing here is I'm using MISP to find the core, on the left hand side, this is a universe of known bad. This is all the bad in the universe that I know about. On the right is Nationwide's network in our observed outbound web traffic. Ideally, there should be zero correlations in a perfect world. Lord knows this is not a perfect world. So the correlations, again, true positives, false positives, or anomalies. All right. So here's a little detail on how we're doing this. In the left-hand side, Nationwide Associates are browsing the internet. They go through a web gateway. I pull those logs. I extract indicators. I transfer them to MISP. I uh, do an import job. You learn if you're, again, I can't tell you enough how cool of a product MISP is. It's, it's absolutely fabulous. It's a correlation engine. It's an aggregation engine that, that puts, it, it, we, we really, uh, talk to me later. You want me to keep espousing on the values of MISP. I love it. Um, import job, I create MISP events. I got a MISP event here. And this one at the bottom is an example where um, I pulled my observed outbound web traffic to 200 k OK traffic. It's the traffic that did go outbound successfully, and it sits in an event. All right, so at that point, here's the deal. Here's the one thing I will say that's so hot about MISP. When you use it this way, when you push this much data into a given event, it, can't, it does have these correlation graphs, right? They won't work. They won't, they won't represent. They won't visualize. It just doesn't work for whatever reasons. The PHP code is my belief that on the back end is the why this doesn't work. So what I'm doing and, and what I did is I, I got really frustrated. I knew there was good correlations in there and I really wanted to look at it, look at it in a, is that a question? Yes, sir. Yes, the question is, have we, uh, have we talked to the MISP developers about it? Yes, really good question. Um, I, I, I have uh, bothered them about things like this. We've, uh, they, they, it, over time, I've been using this for a few years now, MISP itself, and it has gotten better, to, to be honest. It used to really grind to a halt whenever you dropped 100,000 or a million attributes into one event. It would really just crater the whole system. It's gotten a lot better now, but a really good question in the spirit of that, what the work I'm doing, when I drop 75,000 um, attributes into a MISP event, I do my correlations that we're about to talk here, and then I get rid of that event. It, it, you know, you know, it, 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 it behooves one to be very careful and, and watch what, what types of data you're pushing into MISP. It, it, it doesn't normally expect it. But, so in the previous graph, I had created an event with observed traffic. Here's, what, here's the kind of, again, MISP itself really can't render a correlation graph properly for data this large. So we're going to, here's what we're going to do. Yes, sir. The question is, I'm extracting all of my outbound web traffic for a given day. Yes, the time boundary is a day. Um, because of the way this all came about, I'm, I'm either looking at yesterday or maybe three days behind because of the way the data moves through our syslogging tiers. I can deal with it much more efficiently. Um, right, 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 right. So that guy's got it, and this is good. So let's keep going. I like it when I hear that. Um, so I've got an event with my observed traffic in it. I, what I do is I go look at this thing they call related nodes. Related nodes are correlation, correlating nodes. Um, I pull that data out. I create a graph using Python, um, and then what I do is I visualize it with D3. I am shamelessly kind of following the, the pattern that the MISP folks use themselves. I'm using the same technologies because they're using some real good technologies. Um, D3 is, is one of them. 
Um, and again, a MISP has a great API. Luckily, it's an open source product, and Gotti, Gotti won't stop me for selling it. I don't think he will. He's not around. Okay. So, so here's the deal. Here's, here's an example where the center node here, the ego node at 6974, here's one of the things also that those, those that use MISP wanna, want, I want to highlight for you. I've taken the way, the way that MISP itself puts me metadata around their graphs almost renders their correlation graphs unusable. It becomes such a big mess of information. It's really hard to figure out what the heck am I looking at and what's what and how to really focus in on what matters. I've taken their paradigm and made it, moved it, and changed it for my purposes. For my purposes, this is my event number. This is my MISP event number, 6974. What I do is the attributes, in this case, here's an attribute at 192, 129, 227, 187. That's an IP address, obviously. And when I hover over event 6508, I then render the description, the MISP event description. In this case, this event 6508 was co Cove Core G try two. This is caffeine. I sync with caffeine's mist. So when I see caffeine and I'm I'm correlating on one of his events, I become alarmed. So this rarely happens. So when it does, that means this is not not noise. This is signal. So let's go look at what happens. So I get into, go into my sim. In my sim, I see this square wave pattern. Um, I, I give me source or destination destination IP of 192. Blah 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 over the course of four days. In this case, I'm looking back three days. I, I'm, I'm not looking, I, the data has been getting moving and filtering through our syslog tier for three days. So what's been going on here is we have persistence on a, a local endpoint. It turns out it wasn't closing the C2 loop. It wasn't able to close the C2 loop. Nevertheless, it was persistent on a local endpoint. And it kind of exhibits this square wave pattern here, right? Well. That's, that's all I needed to see. At that point, the hunt's over. The, the ticket gets escalated to uh, the SOC. Um, the SOC looks at it. It gets escalated to forensics, and the machine gets re-imaged. So, yes, sir? Justin is asking a really good question. If I tried to uh, uh, just look at it, it some of the peripheral relationships. I, I, let's talk about it more, Justin. No, I have not. I'm doing straight up correlations, one to one right now, and just brute forcing my way through it. So I want to work with Justin. I, I, it's amazing, again, the work that these guys are doing. Um, I'm only looking at outbound web traffic right now. This machine, this correlation engine, lends itself to a lot of the work that Justin is doing with Phoenix. And, 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 and I'm only fractionally realizing what we can do with this type of work. So, um, the, so, so that being said, let's, um, let me give you a real quick demo, because that, that really doesn't speak very much to um, the, the, the essence of what we got. So here's, here's my graphs. This is, the, actually, before I get to the example I just showed you, this is a modern day graph. This is from last week. This matches the category of anomalous traffic. Here's the other thing I want folks to know. You don't just have to drop badness into MISP events. A year and a half ago, it turns out, I just got a correlation last week that correlated observed traffic correlated with a MISP event that was created by a teammate of mine, and the, and the event had to do with something called disposable email address providers, right? That's not necessarily bad, but what is legit? There is no, the question is, is there legitimate business usage for disposable email address providers at Nationwide Insurance? I'm pretty sure the answer is no. But, but I wasn't sure, so here's the deal. So I saw, I watch, I do these every day. And what I saw was, was suddenly this, I suddenly saw that, let me get these up here a little bit and show you. This is one of the things I really um, wanted to do. This, Event 6866, MISP event, correlated. I suddenly had an, uh, an associate. It, it, well, I didn't know. Um, you know. I'm trained not to look too close at who's doing what until you get to a certain level and, and what you're looking at. You don't want to target anyone. But I look at these every day, and what I saw was suddenly I, I see normally one, one correlation, one 
I, domain that correlates for disposable email addresses normally. On this day, which was the 18th of, 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 of this month, suddenly I saw five or six correlations on disposable email address providers. And it was like, that's really unusual. Um, what's up with that? So I just sent a note out to the uh, enterprise, kind of going, and, and all my leadership and everyone in, in our area, um, is, this, is this sanctioned business activity? Um, you know, I don't know what to do with this. This is just unusual. And then I did go look a little bit in the sim. It turns out we have one associate who was, who was going, five, thank you, Brian, f uh, four more minutes. Turns out this was an anomaly. It turns out it was a benign anomaly. Forensics went and looked further at this. Leadership said, what's going on? Um, this, there's no legitimate business need to be hooking up with disposable email address providers at, at our company. We provide email services. It turns out it was a communications specialist. I don't know what she was doing. I don't know, need to know what she was doing. Forensics confirmed no data flowed anywhere. It's a benign event. But this is kind of the, the cool stuff that, that, uh, that um, you can pull out of this. I'm looking at all my traffic. There is no security device or appliance or vendor that can supply and find this kind of stuff. It's anomalous. It's not malicious. It's anomalous, right? And this is just one example of it. You guys get it. It's, it's, it's interesting stuff, and it's really worthwhile. So here's the one that I originally, this was a long time ago. Here's the deal. Um, again, I've cleaned up my graphs over time. This is a bunch of noise, but I want to highlight a few of these nodes to let you guys see. Disposable me, right? High correlations on disposable me at one time. Um, what was this one? So here's, here's where, again, I work with some really cool people. In this case, a gentleman on my team put in an analysis on web activity with long URLs, right? I'm trying to get you to think you can use MISP events than just dropping badness in it. You can drop interesting things and then do correlations with your observed traffic to find out what's actually going on, right? Start thinking of MISP as a different kind of concept is what I'm, I'm suggesting. And I don't know what this one is. Coin blocker, you know, it's just kind of interesting, right? Drop in co coin blockers. Take any kind of list you can think, any kind of accumulations of indicators of interest, drop them in a missive event, and then start doing correlations with your observed. You know, in my case, it was a year and a half old data that suddenly I got correlations on it. It was really neat. Questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Justin's asking, you know, if you varied D3 is amazing. It's also really sucks. It's really not very fun to work with. It's really cryptic. It's really, it's like God. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It, it's you know what? I got this working, and I'm not screwing with it. I got the, but but we, yeah, we need to talk. Absolutely, he's on to what we would want to go do. It. Yes, sir. Okay, so what are we looking at? Is it is it is it uh, forward in time or backward in time? It's all backward in time. Um, some would contend would contend some would contend threat hunting is the definition of threat hunting is looking backward in time, right? Um, obviously, we're trying to get more proactive. I am looking days backwards. If you ask me what's next, what I want to do next is scale this up. This is like a bolt on to something. I want to do this in real time and stream our data in. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So a gentleman's asking, hey, there's this concept called a sim. And why, why, is a, why aren't you, isn't this what a sim does? Thank you for asking that question. I've been waiting that, for that question for years, literally, because that goes through my mind. Alan, what you're doing is what a sim does, right? Okay, I'm almost out of time. Deal is, is I control this landscape. I control all of this. I create the universe of known bad. I create the observed traffic. And therefore, I control my destiny. And again, there, it, there's value in that. That's all I, I think I have time. But c come and talk to me later if you want. Ryan's asking, are we pulling or forking back in? The, the code that I do to render these graphs has been given to um, 
uh, the gentleman at FSI SAC, uh, Chris Ricard. I gave Chris my code. He was the only one that asked for it at FSI SAC. If there's, you know, there's others here. I, I you got it, buddy. I, the deal is, is I do want to share it. it. You, you realize who you're dealing with, right? So it's not, it's self-documented, Ryan. Okay, it's self. I, <laughs> 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 okay, all right. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>